new thought is your only chance. It's your only real opportunity to evolve, to grow, to truly become who you really are. Your mind is right now filled with old thoughts. Not only old thoughts, but mostly someone else's old thoughts. It's important now. It's time now to change your mind about some things. There's a difference between being and doing. And most people have placed their emphasis on the latter. If you choose peace and joy and love, you won't get much of it through what you're doing. If you choose happiness and contentment, you'll find little of that on the path of doing this. If you choose reunion with God, supreme knowing, deep understanding, endless compassion, total awareness, absolute fulfillment, you won't achieve much of that out of what you're doing. In other words, if you choose evolution, the evolution of your soul, you won't produce that by the worldly activities of your body. Doing is a function of the body. Being is a function of the soul. The body is always doing something. Every minute of every day, it's up to something. It never stops. It never rests. It's constantly doing something. It's either doing what it's doing at the behest of the soul or in spite of the soul. The quality of your life hangs in the balance. The soul is forever being. It is being what it is being, regardless of what the body is doing, not because of what it's doing. If you think your life is about doing this, you do not understand what you are about. Your soul does not care what you do for a living. And when your life is over, neither will you. Your soul cares only about what you're being while you're doing whatever you're doing. It is a state of beingness the soul is after, not a state of doingness. The soul is seeking to be me. Yes, me. The soul is me and it knows it. What it is doing is trying to experience that. And what it is remembering is that the best way to have this experience is by not doing anything. There is nothing to do. There is only everything to be. Whatever you choose to be, happy, sad, weak, strong, joyful, vengeful, insightful, blind, good, bad, male, female, you name it. I mean that literally, you name it. The soul is concerned only with where you are going to be. Are you going to be in a place called fear or in a place called love? Where are you? And where are you coming from as you encounter life? Now suppose you were to select even loftier states of being. Suppose you were to select goodness, mercy, compassion, understanding, forgiveness, love. What if you were to select godliness? What then would be your experience? I tell you this. Beingness attracts beingness and produces experience. You are not on this planet to produce anything with your body. You are on this planet to produce something with your soul. Your body is simply and merely the tool of your soul. Your mind is the power that makes the body go. So what you have here is a power tool used in the creation of the soul's desire. 
But this me that is seeking to be is very complex, very multidimensional, multi-sensual, multifaceted. There are a million aspects to me, a billion, a trillion. You see, there is the profane and the profound, the lesser and the larger, the hollow and the holy, the ghastly and the godly, the up and the down, the left and the right, the here and the there, the before and the after, the good and the bad. I am the Alpha and the Omega. This is truth expressed. So in seeking to be me, the soul has a great job ahead of it. An enormous menu of beingness from which to choose. And that is what it is doing in this moment now Choosing states of being and then producing the right and perfect conditions with which to create the experience of that. It is therefore true that nothing happens to you or through you that is not for your own highest good. Let us say that the soul leads you to the right and perfect opportunities for you to experience exactly what you had planned to experience. What you actually experience is up to you. It could be what you plan to experience or it could be something else depending upon what you choose. For if the entity which is you to create and thus know who it really is, it must be through an act of conscious volition, not an act of unconscious obedience. Obedience is not creation, and thus can never produce salvation. Obedience is a response, while creation is pure choice. Undictated, unrequired, pure choice. Pure choice produces salvation through the pure creation of the highest idea in this moment now. The function of soul is to indicate its desire, not impose it. The function of the mind is to choose from its alternatives. The function of the body is to act out that choice. When body, mind, and soul create together in harmony and in unity, God is made flesh. Then does the soul know itself in its own experience. Then do the heavens rejoice. Right now, in this moment, your soul has again created opportunity for you to be, do, and have what it takes to know who you really are. What will you do now? What will you choose to be? Your soul waits and watches with interest, as it has many times before. I'm not concerned about your worldly success, only you are. It is true that when you achieve certain states of being over a long period of time, success in what you are doing in the world is very difficult to avoid. Yet you are not to worry about making a living. True masters are those who have chosen to make a life rather than a living. From certain states of being will spring a life so rich and so full, so magnificent and so rewarding, that worldly goods and worldly success are of no concern to you. Life's irony is that as soon as worldly goods and worldly success are of no concern to you, the way is open for them to flow to you. You cannot have what you want, but you may experience whatever you have. The very act of wanting something pushes it away from you. This is true because the universe has no choice but to bring to you the direct manifestation of your thought. If your thought is, I want worldly success, the creative power is like a genie in a bottle. Your words are its commands, and the universe says, okay, you do. The word I is the key that starts the engine of creation. The words I am are extremely powerful. They are statements to the universe, commands, 
Whatever follows the words I am tends to manifest itself in physical reality. Therefore, I plus want success produces you wanting success. I plus wanting money must produce you wanting money. It can produce no other thing because thoughts and words are creative. Actions are too. And if you act in a way which says that you want success in money, then your thoughts, words, and actions are in accord. And you are sure to have the experience of this wantingness. You are a very powerful creator. If you repeat a thought or say a word over and over again, not once, not twice, but dozens, hundreds, thousands of times, a thought or a word expressed and expressed and expressed and expressed becomes just that, expressed. That is pushed out. It becomes outwardly realized. It becomes your physical reality. Remember, you love this drama. You love the grief. That is, until you don't anymore. There does come a certain point in your evolution when you cease to love the drama. You cease to love the story as you've been living it. That's when you decide and actively choose to change it. Only most don't know how. You now do. To change your reality, simply stop thinking like that. Instead of thinking, I want success, think, I have success. Affirmations do not work if they are merely statements of what you want to be true. Affirmations work only when they are statements of something you already know to be true. The best so-called affirmation is a statement of gratitude and appreciation. Thank you, God, for bringing me success in my life right now. That idea, thought, spoken and acted upon, produces wonderful results. When it comes from true knowing, not from attempt to produce results, but from an awareness that results have already been produced. Jesus had such clarity. Before every miracle, he thanked me in advance for its deliverance. It never occurred to him not to be grateful because it had never occurred to him that what he declared would not happen. The thought never entered his mind. So sure was he of who he was and of his relationship to me that his every thought, word, and deed reflected his awareness. Just as your thoughts, words, and deeds reflect yours. If then there is something you choose to experience in your life, do not want it, choose it. Do you choose success in worldly terms? Do you choose more money? Good. Then choose it, really, fully, not half-heartedly. Yet at that stage of development, do not be surprised if worldly success no longer concerns you. There comes a time in the evolution of every soul when the chief concern is no longer the survival of the physical body, but the growth of the spirit. No longer the attainment of worldly success, but the realization of self. The soul quietly watches this whole drama play out year after year, month after month, day after day, moment after moment, and always holds the truth about you. It never forgets the blueprint, the original plan, the first idea, the creative thought. Its job is to remind you, to remind you, so that you may remember once again who you are and then choosing who you now wish to be. In this way, the cycle of creation and experience, imaging and fulfilling, knowing and growing into the unknown continues both now 
and forevermore. 